If I could have your attention now in the media center, we are joined by today's runner-up finisher for the 27th annual Auto Lotto 200 and the driver's Eric Jones, driver of the number 20 GameStop NASCAR Heat Evolution Toyota. Eric, today with his second place performance, he, capt he captured a spot in the NASCAR Xfinity Series chase. So congratulations on that, Eric. Uh, and if you can just uh, run us through uh, your run today and, uh, and what, what it means for you to lock yourself into the chase. Uh, it feels good to be locked in, but, you know, just uh, had a decent run today. We were second class most of the day, you know, a little bit better at some points. We got the lead there in the middle part of the race. But uh, overall, I, I think we just weren't quite good enough for the 18. Um, thought maybe we would have had something for him there at the end with four tires, but it, it took about probably 20, 25 laps for it to really get burned in and, and four tires really come into play. So unfortunately, we didn't have that long of a run. Um, and then we got caught up behind a lap car, and I just wasn't able to keep pressure on him. So uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, a good day overall for the GameStop Camry. Learned a lot. We came a long ways from yesterday um, to get ourselves a, a solid run today. Good deal. We'll open up the floor to questions. If you have a question, please uh, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Terrell and go to Pat. Then the Hi, Eric. Terrell Covey, Portsmouth Herald. Um, I'm just wondering, with you, with you guys only coming here once a year, um, how hard is it for you to kind of make those changes and, and you know, prepare the car the way that you want, uh, especially when you're racing against guys that are here a couple times a year? It's tough, you know. I mean, you, you think about this track is, is super unique. I don't think there's another one really on the schedule like it, uh, a mile flat track like this. So it's tough for us to get our stuff good. Um, and, and it's tough for, for me as a driver to come here and race guys that have been here, you know, like Kyle and Brad. They've been here 10, 15, 20 times, and they have just so much more experience that – I felt like I was playing catch up all weekend and especially yesterday trying to get caught up to where those guys are on this track and so many little things here that make speed that you got to figure out quick and um, I felt like we did a good job of that. I didn't really know what I needed out of my car yesterday and we did a good job of, of managing and, and trying to figure out the best we could to get to where we needed to be and, and felt like we did a good job of that. Go next to Pat. Uh, Pat Nicole, NASCAR com. Eric, did you, uh, did you ever figure out how to spend that dash or cash check and uh, we get another one coming up here so does that change your race strategy at all or how do you go into that uh i found out how to spend it i bought a car but i can't uh i can't talk about it so um anyways uh i'm looking forward to the uh to indy for sure you know i wish we were going for the for the bonus over there um for for all four of them in a row but um you know indy's such a cool place for us and indy's such a uh, a unique track to begin with, but the throw in the dash or cash is kind of an added bonus for sure. So looking forward to getting back to the heat race format. And uh, we've had a lot of success in that format. So we can uh, hopefully go and, and get a win there next weekend would be pretty special. Go next to Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN. For Eric, uh, you were just talking about it. Have you guys learned anything from the heat format that you'll apply to Indy, especially because Indy is going to be so different, you know, for just 15 laps. But... Will you, do you think you'll learn enough there where you can make a few tweaks to the car between heats and main event? Yeah, Andy's definitely unique compared to the other ones. You know, we had 50 laps at Bristol and I think 50 laps at Dover as well. So um, 15 laps at Indy is, is a long time still, you know, longer than you think. But uh, it's still a short heat race. But we'll, we'll be able to learn something for sure. That's a long enough run at Indy to really yeah, feel out your car some and make some adjustments. So. Uh, we'll go into it with the same kind of mentality we did at the last two and our last three, really, and, and work on our stuff and get it better, get it, get it the best we can. And then uh, I think every one of the Dash or Cash races, we've learned quite a bit about our car from the heat race and been able to make a fair amount of adjustments before the main to, to get it where it needs to be. Any more questions for Eric? Eric, really appreciate you coming in today, and uh, good luck in the Dash or Cash next week. Thanks. We're also joined right now by Alex Bowman, the eighth place finisher in today's 27th annual Auto Lotto 200 and kind of a man of the hour this week and taking on double duty in that 88 nationwide uh, car tomorrow uh, in the New Hampshire 301. Can you run us through what happened on the track today and, uh, and just your thoughts going into tomorrow as well? Uh, you know, a bit of a rough day. Kind of first start didn't go very well and uh, got roughed up a little bit here and there and Obviously, everybody's going to want to talk about the three car. Um, obviously, got together with him. Wasn't really thrilled with how he drove me prior to that, but it wasn't by any means intentional. Uh, he drove me way up the racetrack. Obviously, got tight. 
I got over the seam, slide my right front way up in the junk, had a bunch of wheel in it, and when it settled down and straightened out, it came off the wall six inches, and six inches was enough to, to turn around. So it didn't do it intentionally, it just was tight and had a bunch of wheel in the car, and um, it happened. So obviously he's, uh, he's upset, he'll get over it someday. Um, at the same time, our, our JRM Genesis brake light um, Camaro was, was pretty decent from then on. We put us in a box and used a set of tires that we didn't need to use there. And, um, but obviously we, we were able to run top five a lot of the day from then on and just were on 20 lap older tires than everybody else that last run. So um, it's my fault. I put us in a box and I guess maybe there's something different I could have done, but I was trying not to hit the wall and he squeezed me all the way up there and uh, it happened and put us in a box. So we'll move on from it. Um, ready to go for tomorrow and uh, hopefully give Hendrick Motorsports and the 88 Nationwide car a, a good run. Good deal. We'll open the floor up for questions here. If you have a question for Alex, please raise your hand. We'll go with Terrell and then go to Pat. Hi, Alex. Terrell Covey, Portsmouth Herald. Um, I'm just wondering, with, uh, with Dale not being here this weekend, do you uh, approach things a little bit more, do you uh, a little differently, and do you kind of feel a little more pressure to try to have strong finishes? Um, on the Xfinity side, no, not really. Like, everything is the same on the Xfinity side as it's been. Um, Dale's so busy during the weekends that he's here, you don't, we don't really see him. Maybe he'll sit on top of the box, but I don't really get to see him. I talk to him about the same amount via text message or phone call, or he, he loves FaceTime. So, um, you know, just, uh, just all, all the same stuff, really, on the Xfinity side. Um, obviously, the Cup side's a whole different story because I'm filling in for him, but... Uh, from, from our side today, everything's the same. Go to Pat. Pat Nicole on NASCAR.com. Do you plan on talking to Ty at some point? And, you know, where these situations where drivers have different views of what happened, like how do you like to approach that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to him, probably let him cool down a little bit. The kid tried to wreck me like four times and couldn't get it done after that. So um, probably let him calm down so I can talk to him without it turning into just him yelling at me. I mean because that's probably what he's going to do. That's probably what I would do, too. I mean, I'd be upset, too. He has every right to be upset. So, um, yes, I will talk to him at some point, but I'd probably let him cool down first. Go to Dustin next, and then back to Bob. Uh, Dustin, I'll be no front stretch. Alex, what's your past relationship with Ty? Have you guys friends or? Friends with Austin. I've never really talked to Ty, to be honest with you. Like, I've, I've never, um, just when he's around, he's never really talked to him. Um, the prior laps in the race, he was not pleasant to race around, but I mean, you'll have that. So um, obviously just uh, no real prior relationship. Go to Bob next, then back to Nick. For you, is this kind of a strange position where you have something maybe that would you worry about or something, but you have a, such a big event tomorrow. I mean, are you gonna be able to put this with drama with Ty out of your mind at all, you know, and focus on tomorrow? Yeah, for sure. Um, Plenty of other people have had, had drama with different race car drivers, and then they're over it the next week. I think it's no different here. Um, Ty's been in situations with other drivers, too, and, and they've all, Ty's gotten over it, they've gotten over it, and been able to race each other respectfully from, from then on. So, um, yeah, for sure, I'm focused on tomorrow. We walk out of this room, and I'm not really worried about what happened on the racetrack today. Go back to Nick and back up front to Pat. Nick to group motorsport.com. Alex, looking towards tomorrow, have you talked to Dale and has he given you any advice going into this race? Uh, we talked quite a bit last night. Um, haven't talked to him today. I've just been so busy and tied up with, with the race and everything. But um, I feel like he gave some good advice. We still struggled with short run speed in, in the cup car. Um, but our long run speed wasn't bad. Uh, I went out behind the 11 car and ran with him for, for 20 or so laps. So. I feel like we're decent over there. Um, I, I feel like we're, we're definitely poised for a solid day. Thanks. Go front to Pat. Uh, Pat to Cole NASCAR com again. Uh, you mentioned that Dale's a big fan of FaceTime. Uh, so I'm curious if he's ever FaceTime you doing something crazy or from a crazy location or something. No, I just know that everybody's phone kept ringing last night. And I was in the shower. TJ Majors told me that he was in the shower and his phone rang three times. Um, so he was just wanting to talk. I think Dale's probably sitting at home, super bored, watching the TV. He's probably criticizing what I did today, <laughs> saying, why didn't you do a better job? 
Um, I don't know. He's probably just really bored at home, so he wanted to talk to everybody last night. Um, I don't think I've ever actually answered a, a video, any type of video chat from him, but uh, definitely missed a few from him. Any additional questions for Alex? Well, Alex, we appreciate you coming in, and uh, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. If I could have your attention in the media center today, we're joined by our winning team for today's 27th annual Auto Lotto 200 here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And the winner of today's race is none other than Kyle Bush, driver of the number 18 NOS Energy Drink Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing, and crew chief Chris Gale. Just some superlatives that we need to note here today. Kyle was so good, he scored a perfect driver rating of 150.0. Uh, his, his record extending 82nd win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and his second in a row. Uh, we'll start with you, Kyle. Uh, could you just walk in, uh, What made you so successful out there today? Well, I think it was having a really good car and, um, you know, being with a great team. Uh, these guys, Chris Gale and, and his team, do such a really good job for me. We unloaded off the truck and we were fast this weekend. So. Uh, they came here with a brand new setup, and that was really good for us. It uh, just kind of changed the aspect of the weekend and being able to have a really good car and a comfortable car to drive over the course of this flat track. So, um, you know, that was those were the biggest things, I'd say, that, uh, that helped us out. Certainly, Chris's calls on pit road were really good, and being able to keep us up front all day and uh, contending for the lead much of the race. And, of course, those late restarts were obviously uh, to our advantage, being able to restart where I wanted to. And, Choosing the outside seemed to be the preferred lane and, and being able to just keep that momentum going through the outside of turns one and two and getting a good launch off of turn two for the backstretch and trying to get single file with my teammate Eric Jones. So, um, you know, Eric, Eric ran a great race. He's uh, obviously in, in really good equipment as well, too, and we know how good he is. And it was going to be tough to beat him on his four tires, but, um, you know, track position one day. Chris, with as dominant as Kyle was out there today, was there ever a point in this race where you were nervous? Uh, a little bit. You know, I, when we took two the first time, you know, obviously I didn't know everyone else was going to take four and we were going to be the only ones sitting on two. You know, when you're the leader, you're kind of a sitting duck to, you have to call your strategy and they base it off you. So, you know, I wish I had almost changed that call last minute and done four. But then once I saw we were able to hold off, you know, on two, then I'm like, okay, this is pretty simple. Track position is probably going to matter. Um, so, no, I mean, I was a little nervous. I think Kyle was, he may not say it, but a little bit on that last restart, he didn't quite know because it went into, into one and two and didn't quite turn well enough for him. And then, um, you know, I knew we were on two. The 20 was right behind us on four. So I was a nervous for a couple corners. But once I knew he'd get through two or three corners and the pressures would get up and it would start e inching away from the 20, we'd be fine. Okay, we're going to open the floor up to questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start over with Bob and work our way around. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN. Kyle. This was a race that Tift was supposed to run, is that what you, so um, will, will he be able to get one that was scheduled for you later if he's healthy or um, how will that work? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, you know, obviously it's, uh, you know, it's a disappointing situation for Tift, I'm sure, to know that he's got really good equipment sitting here waiting for him to get back in the car and he wasn't able to race this weekend. So, um, you know, of course, um, texting back and forth with him a little bit and making sure that he's doing well and, and rehab's going going well. So it uh, seems like things are, are, if not on pace, maybe a little bit ahead of pace for him to be able to get back in the race car. So look forward to that. And, and what happens with the races that, that I'm running or that he was scheduled to run that somebody else might run, I'm not sure. That, that's a D'Souza question. That's a management question. More questions down here for Kyle. Chris, go to Ryan. <clears throat> get, a, get a microphone to Ryan, please. Ryan DeCosta, Nesson Fuel. Um, seems like the speed charts, Toyota has been dominating this weekend. How do you try to go out there and beat your teammates? I'm just glad I'm in a Toyota. So uh, if that's the case, you know, we, we do have really good cars. Um, you know, I feel like there's been a lot of hard work done at the shop, and, and that's the reason why we're all so fast. But, you know, uh, it's through the great help of TRD and everybody in Costa Mesa as well as uh, Salisbury that help us out in making our chassis and cars better. So 
Um, you know, it's just how do I go out there and beat my teammates? Uh, you, you just try your best and do what you can. And hopefully communication and, and getting your car set up correctly for the race is what's best for you. You know, there, there may be some things that Denny Hamlin focuses on in practice that, uh, that help him on a short run that I, that I might focus on that help me in the long run. So uh, it's just a matter of being able to go out there and race. And that's why we race these races to see who's, uh, who's the best after the course of all those different variables. Any additional questions for our race winners? We'll go to Terrell. Kyle, Terrell Covey, Ports with Herald. Um, i just wondering, when you're racing with the, uh, the Xfinity guys and your teammates here, a couple of pretty young guys, um, very talented, what kind of a, a mentor role do you take with these guys? And um, do you, you know, when you're out there on the track, are you, do you have opportunity to really do that? Or is it mostly in debriefs, team meetings, things like that? Um, you know, anytime they ever want to call me and talk to me, I'm always uh, open and willing to talk to them. Uh, last night, Eric Jones texted me a little bit about trying to help him out for today and, and asked me some questions uh, today that uh, I was able to help him out with, I, I feel like anyways. And, and he was right there with me all day. You know, he was on my, on my bumper learning, hopefully, and, and taking all that in and seeing what he could do to better himself for this track and getting himself ready for next year. So, uh, you know, the, the Xfinity cars don't come back here the, the second time around, but um, having the experience that he had today, I feel like was a big learning experience for him. And, um, you know, again, I, I try to help all those guys as much as I can, as much as they want, want the help. And, um, you know, hopefully, it, obviously, I feel like it's, it is going well and, and they're able to uh, be successful. Gentlemen, congratulations again on the tremendous performance right. today and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Yep.